I've always thought it's so strange mm-hmm. when a straight man or you know a straight man check <laughs> these days you just don't know okay Listen, let's just keep it real most of them ain't straight to check, be honest, that's a whole nother right. conversation <laughs> you're right you're right <laughs> but you know i've always found it so strange mm-hmm. when a, a man who considers himself straight mm-hmm. is so bothered by somebody else's sexuality mm-hmm. to the point that you would just be so explicit with it to me that just tells me it's something to milk it right One. Welcome to another episode on Let's Talk About Us with Uche. I am your host, Uche. Thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting since day one. If you are listening to my podcast for the very first time, please make sure to subscribe, share with your friends and family. If you are watching on YouTube for the first time, also make sure to subscribe, share with your friends and family, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and please do not forget to hit that bell notification sign the time I upload a video. You'll be the very first to be notified. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the Uche family. So today I am here with my friend again, John. Definitely. You are one of my people. <laughs> Thank you for having Fist me bump. again. Oh, I'm <clears throat> not going to leave you hanging. My name is Jonathan. I am, again, from Houston, Texas, 29 years old. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We need to talk about the LGBTQ community. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I talk about this is because <clears throat> as queer people, a lot of us don't know how to how to be queer. We don't mm-hmm. know how to fit into the world. Mm-hmm. A lot of us grew up in households where we were rejected, mm-hmm. shunned. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, we, everyone, for the most part, you know, has heard you will go to hell. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some type of damnation, demonic possession, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. there's always, it's always that narrative that's been spinned. Right. A lot of us don't feel like we can be ourselves 100 percent, even within black spaces you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying like you could be black but you can't be gay you can't be bisexual you can't be anything right other than that heteronormative macho man or else you'd be uh, ostracized yeah so a lot of us grew up in the closet hiding from who we are and Mm -hmm. things like that right um and as a result and also a lot of us don't have that advocacy we don't have Mm-hmm. We don't have how to be. Mm-hmm. There's no role models. There's no a whole lot of positive role models right. that is diverse, as diverse as the heterosexuals have. You know what I'm Correct. saying? A lot of times, a lot of us grow up uh, watching some of the mainstream media, you mm-hmm. know, try to emulate the lifestyles, you know, and a lot of mm-hmm. times it's in showbiz. You know, and there's nothing wrong with showbiz. I know you're right. in fashion, but the reality is that that's right. not everyone. You know what right. I'm saying? Like a gay or lesbian or bisexual young person may not be able to relate to the Billy Porters. And I know straight people, they have their versions of Neil Mm -hmm. Patrick, I think that's his name. Neil Patrick Harris. Harris, you know, they have their own version, but then with the straight people, they have diversity. There's a whole lot of diversity uh, options of who to choose. Mm -hmm. So as a result, a lot of us, we don't know who we are Mm -hmm. because we've never been given the opportunity to love ourselves. There's Mm -hmm. there's never been that push for you to accept yourself fully. It's always, you can be this, this, and that, accept this. There's always some Mm -hmm. type of exception. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us, we struggle with that. And then we walk into the world struggling to find our identity, struggling Mm -hmm. to find our families, our chosen families, and you know, and as a result, it's, it's just a mess, in right. my opinion, anyway. I see a whole lot of mess. And I've traveled the world, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I've traveled the world in places in Africa, places mm-hmm. in Europe. It's worse than Africa, chat. Places in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> you know, places in Europe, right. places in Asia, you yeah. know, the Australias. And it's yeah. always the same, the same repetition mm-hmm. of the, they're not knowing who we are. Mm-hmm. There's a sense of collective emptiness and collective pain right. that we all have, right? Mm-hmm. And we perpetuate some of those pains, mm-hmm. sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want to talk about this to unpack why is that. Gotcha. Queer identifying people have been fighting for representation so hard over the past, I don't know how many decades. It feels like it's been like a harder fought battle for the past I don't know, I'd say maybe 10 years or maybe that's just when it's really come into my awareness as somebody who's just kind of stepping into themselves as an adult. Um, But it does feel like over the past couple of, I'd say maybe 10 or maybe 10 or 15 years, um, the fight for representation has kind of grown, which is how to being seen as 
some type of, you know, weird sideshow that you can, like, we're tired of being seen also as an accessory because mm. it's okay to be gay if you can be an accessory to someone who is obviously straight, typically a cis hetero woman. Mm-hmm. The fight for representation has kind of work to shift that a bit more. People have been gay for just as long as people have been straight. People have been bisexual for just as long as people have been straight. Like, this isn't really something that's new. So I just feel like if the representation was a lot better, Mm. and we are starting to get to a point where it is, you know, we do have different television shows, not to just speak on, like, media, Mm -hmm. um, but we do have different television shows, and we do have, you know, actual magazines that are geared more toward, like, queer-centric and queer-identifying people. Um, You do have a lot of mainstream artists, mainstream executives, like you have people that are in these industries that are saying, hey, Mm. I'm here, this is me, I identify with you and your past, or I identify with you and your story, Mm. here's mine, and here's, (laughs) here's like, I'm here to be like the poster child, I guess you'd Mm. say, for what you can be. I've always thought it's so strange Mm -hmm. when... A straight man, or you know, a straight man, check. <laughs> These days, you just don't know. Okay, Listen, let's just keep it real. Most of them ain't straight. To be honest, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> that's a, that's, a, you're that's right, a whole different right. series of episodes. So sorry, <laughs> but you know, I've always found it so strange mm-hmm. when a man who considers himself straight mm-hmm. is so bothered by somebody else's sexuality mm-hmm. to the point that you would just be so explicit with it. To me, that just tells me it's something to milk it, right? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I've seen that behavior. Maybe I just haven't met a lot of Mm non-blacks, but I've I've noticed within the black community, there's a lot more aggression, like intentional aggression towards Mm -hmm. LGBTQ. You would think that, you know, all these minorities would stick together and, you know, like, because at the end of the day, white supremacy is the enemy. Would you say it's because the black man has been threatened here in America? So there's a, there are masculinity has been questioned and threatened, you know, especially yeah. considering slavery. There was a time that a black man was not considered human, mm-hmm. you know, they were you're considered like property. Farming black people at one point. Exactly. Black men. Would you say that's part of a trauma that has definitely brought black men to nothing, reduced black men to nothing? So historically, it's been ingrained in us that we are nothing. So we're desperately trying to prove that we are something. So when we see something that does not align with what we know as mm-hmm. masculine, or at least <clears throat> we're, we're trying to mm-hmm. um, attain as masculine, we look mm-hmm. down on it. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to make an actual podcast episode to unpack a lot of where my yeah. my my confidence comes from. Because mm-hmm. I've I've met people, especially Nigerians, like. They, 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 some of them, they think I'm weird. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I've graduated from that nonsense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I stand out to a lot of people, mm-hmm. and they don't understand why. It was like, because if you knew the fucking mountains I've climbed and the mm-hmm. fucking oceans I've, I've crossed, you would understand. Because yeah. my cross was heavy, and can no bitch Listen. tell me otherwise. Listen. <laughs>